The Haunting of Bellwood Asylum. It all began on a chilly autumn morning, the day Sean and I set out on our mission to uncover the hidden horrors of the Bellwood Asylum. As an investigative journalist, I had always been drawn to stories that lurked in the shadows, waiting to be revealed, and the Bellwood Asylum was the darkest shadow of them all. Rumors about the asylum's grim past had circulated for decades, whispered secrets among the town's residents. They spoke of unspeakable atrocities, of the horrific experiments conducted on innocent children, and the malevolent spirits that were said to haunt the decaying building. It was a story too enticing to ignore, and with my trusty cameraman Sean by my side, we were determined to uncover the truth. Our journey began with the collection of eyewitness accounts from the elderly residents of the town. They had grown up hearing the eerie tales of the asylum, and they shared chilling stories of strange occurrences around the abandoned building. Mysterious lights flickering in the dead of night, haunting cries that echoed through the woods, and sightings of shadowy figures moving behind shattered windows. But it wasn't just local legends that fueled our investigation. We delved deep into historical records, sifting through dusty archives and yellowed pages. The documents we uncovered hinted at the asylum's sinister past, a place where children had been subjected to grotesque experiments, their innocent lives forever scarred. With every interview and document we collected, the darkness surrounding Bellwood Asylum became more tangible. The town's history seemed intertwined with the facility, like a stain that refused to fade. Our growing obsession with the asylum led us to make a bold decision. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Sean and I decided to venture inside the forsaken building, determined to confront the malevolent whispers that seemed to seep from its very walls. As we pushed open the creaking door and stepped inside, the atmosphere grew oppressively heavy. Our flashlights pierced through the inky darkness, revealing peeling wallpaper and shattered glass. The asylum's corridors stretched endlessly before us, and it felt as though time had frozen within its decaying walls. We continued to explore, guided only by the flickering beams of our flashlights. The air grew colder with every step, and the oppressive silence was broken only by the sound of our echoing footsteps. Shadows seemed to move in the corners of our vision, playing tricks on our frayed nerves. It was during this extended exploration that we began to hear the first faint murmurs, whispers that seemed to come from nowhere and yet were everywhere. They were incomprehensible, like the jumbled voices of the forgotten souls trapped within the asylum's grim history. As we ventured deeper into the asylum's decaying corridors, the temperature plummeted and an oppressive darkness enveloped us. I could feel an icy hand brushing against my skin, and Sean's voice trembled as he whispered, Do you hear that, Rachel? Ghostly voices echoed through the halls, their mournful cries chilling me to the bone. We saw a shadowy figure darting in and out of doorways, its outline obscure yet undeniably reminiscent of a nurse. Panic surged through us, but we couldn't leave, not when we were so close to uncovering the truth. The asylum seemed to lead us to a hidden chamber deep within its bowels. There, amidst crumbling walls and decaying furniture, we found old journals and faded photographs. The horrors they revealed were beyond our darkest nightmares. Accounts of experiments performed on innocent children, their pain and suffering meticulously documented. We spent hours poring over the journals, our faces bathed in the dim light of our flashlights. The words on those pages told of unimaginable cruelty, children subjected to torturous procedures in the name of science, their anguished pleas falling on deaf ears. It was as if we were bearing witness to the tortured souls themselves, their voices echoing through the pages. But as we delved deeper into the journal entries, a more sinister truth began to emerge. It seemed that the experiments were not merely the work of one deranged scientist, but were sanctioned by the highest authorities within the asylum. The staff, including nurses and doctors, had been complicit in the unspeakable acts. The depths of human cruelty knew no bounds in the dark history of Bellwood Asylum. As we continued our investigation, we stumbled upon a collection of photographs tucked away in a dusty corner of the chamber. They depicted the children who had suffered within these walls, gaunt faces, hollow eyes, and the unmistakable look of despair etched onto their young features. 
Each photograph was a haunting reminder of the innocent lives that had been forever scarred. Amidst the journals and photographs, we found one last document, a handwritten letter that bore witness to the guilt of one of the nurses. In her shaky script, she confessed her involvement in the experiments and the torment that had plagued her conscience ever since. It was a chilling testament to the horrors that had unfolded within the asylum's walls. But our exploration was not without consequence. As we delved deeper into the asylum's darkest secrets, the shadowy figure we had encountered earlier materialized. It was the dark spirit of a nurse who had once worked there. This time, her presence grew stronger and her spectral rage intensified. She seemed desperate to prevent us from exposing the truth, her vengeful intentions palpable. Suddenly, a bone-chilling scream echoed through the chamber, and I turned to see Sean writhing in agony, his hands clutching his head as if he were being torn apart from within. The spirit's wrath had found its target, and Sean was its victim. As Sean's agonized screams pierced the air, I felt my heart shatter into a million pieces. It was a gut-wrenching decision, but I knew that I had to make it. The malevolent spirit had latched onto Sean, its vengeful fury consuming him. I couldn't help him now. There was nothing I could do to free him from the spirit's grip. Desperation and fear coursed through my veins as I stumbled out of the hidden chamber, clutching the damning evidence in my trembling hands. Every fiber of my being screamed for me to turn back, to rescue my friend from the clutches of the malevolent force that had ensnared him. But as I reached the chamber's threshold, a force more powerful than fear held me back. The voice of reason whispered in my ear, reminding me that Sean's sacrifice might be the only way to ensure the truth saw the light of day. His torment could serve as irrefutable evidence of the darkness that had plagued the asylum for so long. Tears streamed down my face as I made the heart-wrenching decision to leave him behind. I whispered words of encouragement and promised to return, though deep inside, I knew that his chances of survival were slim. With one last agonized glance back at my friend, I fled the chamber, determined to escape the asylum's clutches and share the damning evidence with the world. As I emerged from the asylum, the echoes of Sean's torment still reverberating in my ears, my heart was heavy with grief and guilt. I had left my friend behind, a sacrifice to the malevolent force that had consumed him. It was a choice I never thought I would have to make, one that haunted my every step. But I knew that his sacrifice was not in vain. The evidence I had clutched in my trembling hands would serve as a damning testament to the horrors of Bellwood Asylum. The world needed to know the truth, to bear witness to the atrocities that had occurred within those cursed walls. With a heavy heart, I made my way back to the town, driven by the unwavering determination to publish our findings. The chilling tale of the asylum's dark history would soon be exposed to the world. I immediately contacted the local authorities, sharing the evidence we had collected and informing them of Sean's predicament. They launched a search party, their flashlights cutting through the night as they combed every inch of the asylum. Hours turned into days, and still, there was no sign of Sean. It was as if the asylum had swallowed him whole, erasing any trace of his presence. The town was gripped by a sense of unease and sorrow as they realized the grim reality of what had transpired. Sean had sacrificed himself for the sake of the truth, and it seemed that the malevolent spirit had claimed him as its own. Despite our efforts, the authorities could find no trace of my dear friend. His disappearance became an enduring mystery, a painful reminder of the horrors we had uncovered. The town rallied together to honor his memory, erecting a memorial in his name to ensure that his sacrifice would never be forgotten. Our investigative journey had not only uncovered the truth, but had also helped the tortured souls find closure. The tale of Bellwood Asylum became a cautionary one, a stark reminder of the consequences of unchecked scientific curiosity and the enduring power of malevolence that lingers in the shadows. Sean's sacrifice will forever be etched in my memory, a painful reminder of the price we paid for uncovering the truth.